Hi guys, it's Debbie, and today I would like to speak about the human nature, about whether it is born with a tendency to violence and chaos, and whether there is the need of a structure in the human environment to prevent damage, all topics which have been analysed many times in many works of art. This topic, as a matter of fact, was inspired by Westworld, the awards-winning series which is currently airing its second season. I'll quickly introduce the idea behind this series to kick off the topic before moving on to the general discussion. In simple words, Westworld is a theme park in which rich customers can experience life in an alternative reality. The whole park is populated by robots which are indistinguishable from humans. They are programmed to interact with the guests and entertain them with uh, uh, adventures, interesting side stories and in general just with the experience of enjoying a completely different lifestyle. This very ambitious and seemingly innocent goal of the park rapidly evolves and it moves beyond its original intentions because regardless of what I think I assume of very lengthy terms and conditions, the guests of the park are suddenly given unlimited access to a new world in which they feel like gods. They no longer feel weighed down by uh, the rules of their conventional old world. So some guests feel entitled to kill, torture, rape, abuse of the hosts of the park, laughing off the matter with the excuse that the robots don't feel anything or they'll just be repaired. They even hunt rare animals, a hobby which isn't allowed in our real world. So when I speak of guests experiencing a new lifestyle, uh, letting their emotions run free, I don't mean activities such as um, the guests having unrestrained sex with the host, a thing which happens often all over the park. Some of the robots are actually programmed to be prostitutes and it's not even the morbid interest for violence. Violence. That will always be a part of the human mind. We will always be intrigued by the idea of death, blood, we will want to see more. And many depict this as a beauty in violence. Quentin Tarantino's works are all about the aesthetic of violence, but it's not this. So what I'm speaking about is the desire of freedom in absence of consequences. Most of all the above mentioned activities are not exactly allowed in the park, but there don't seem to be particular consequences for these misdemeanors probably because of the high price of a ticket to the park. So visitors don't really have any fear. They know there won't be any consequences of their actions, so they let their instincts run free. This raises a few questions. For example, do we humans have an innate understanding of what is right, right and what is wrong? Or is it just the fear of consequences in a world of rules that just prevents us from doing anything wrong? This raises all the discussion surrounding the primitive, instinctive animal nature, the possible need of some structure to avoid chaos. This is a very bleak vision of uh, humanity in my opinion. I think that our mind has the ability of creating some sort of boundaries on its own. For example, in Westworld, not all the guests enjoy their experience in the ways we were speaking about earlier. And I also believe that the idea of a wild, untamed nature does not always equal to violence, but also creativity, intellect, uh, passionate love, all concepts which move beyond fixed regulations. And there's also a need to read everything within a context. In a violent incident, even in our real world, the background of the perpetrator nearly always hides are something that triggers the action. This doesn't justify the act, but it does prove how the same nature will develop in different ways according to the different environment, to the different things it has endured. If we look at work such as Natural Born Killers, which from the title already introduces our characters, which are ruthless murderers, digging deeper we discover that the woman, Mallory, had been scarred already at a very young age by a very abusive in any sense, father. These acts don't justify the character's behaviour, but they get us thinking, what if Mallory had never endured all of this? Would she have been the same evil person or not? So is there something innate in us? Are we written to be violent? Hypothetical scenarios such as Westworld, in which there is no reason for the violence, make us think what the outcome would be if such environments were to be established in our world, and sooner or later they will. The 2009 film Gamer perfectly depicts this. In Gamer, uh, users can enter a virtual reality, they can play this, uh, this game, but which is acted out by real people, and the situation is completely out of control. Users command their avatars to injure themselves, have non-consensual sex, get themselves in very dangerous situations because there are no consequences, it is a game. We're going back to the earlier discussion and we are all human. 
We know that need for a thrill, to feel liberated, satisfied. We go bungee jumping, we masturbate, we overeat, we scream, we go running just to let free all of that adrenaline, everything that built up to escape from the weight of reality. We read, we listen to music, we watch films, we paint, we dress up as somebody else, we write, we write music. See where I'm going with this? We are creating our new world, a new reality for ourselves. And in the situation of a game, we enjoy not being ourselves for those hours. We become those characters and we live according to their rules. This is seen in works such as Ready Player One, where the virtual reality eventually starts to become the real world, it replaces the real world. The problem comes when that is not sufficient or when there are real life consequences. So are we always going to push our boundaries? Are we always going to need more such as Westworld? And what is actually the boundary? And also once you have passed it, is it easy to come back? If we look at A Clockwork Orange, society attempts to cure Alex, the main character of the plot and a very violent criminal. But as the story progresses, we see that the boundaries, his new boundaries set by society to contain him, only manage to slow him down in a temporary manner because there are consequences that he is not coming back after he crossed that boundary. And he is never satisfied. For example, part of his therapy includes studying religion, studying the Bible. And in one scene, he, he explains how he enjoys reading the Bible, but because he is having this vision of him being the one that is torturing Jesus in the Bible. And this was back in the 70s. Imagine how people received that film. Now, Alex Delage is not a good example as a standard example of society. As I was saying before, I don't totally agree with a completely bleak vision such as the one that's been presented in these films, even in series such as Black Mirror. I don't believe we are pure instinctive animals with no rationality. But I think that we often stray upon, or at least ponder about, that line between what society says is right and what we personally consider as right. Take The Dark Knight, for instance, an example of a reign of pure chaos. In his insanity, the Joker makes many of the characters question their society. He leads them into believing that chaos is what we came from and ultimately in what we will thrive. And I think that in the film, his character was so well developed and so convincing that watching the Joker preach, we start to understand him. We don't just see the lunatic in him, we see the human. His deranged ideas start to form us something concrete. And I think that this is why he represents such a good enemy to Batman. He is not your regular criminal. The interrogation scene in The Dark Knight, it's so powerful because we are seeing a villain speaking on a philosophical level. Even the Batman, not agreeing, is listening to him. Why would we see the humanity in a killer like the Joker? Why would we even consider listening to him because we know that what he preaches is wrong but it's not far from something our mind could grasp. We can envision his ideals for how wrong they may be. Everything in fiction stems from reality but yet at the same time most of us go against him. Even in the most extreme situations our mind instinctively kicks in that need for rules to know what to do. We despise the void. Most of us could never live chaotically and instinctively like the Joker, or it would just be a temporary rush of adrenaline followed by emptiness. In a similar manner, Fight Club preaches chaos as the solution to a world which essentially doesn't care anymore. Because of thousands of years of evolution, uh, the improvement of the quality of living, people are no longer proud of their roles as, as alpha individuals, of fighting for their world, for their survival. They've instead made themselves the passive victims of a safe lifestyle. So Tyler Durden preaches that violence, chaos, risking our lives, will eventually bring us back to appreciating life and that safety and conventional habits only suppress individuality. In Fight Club and in nearly all the works I've spoken about today, chaos and violence are often associated with freedom, while regulations, habits as overwhelming. But all of this is set in a dystopian reality, an unideal world. I think this video raised more questions than it actually answered, but I hope it was all in a constructive manner. Let me know your thoughts on the topic. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you'd like to see more content, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye!